Hi YouTubers and welcome to Can't Cook with Jason. Today we're going to be making one of my favourite Chinese dishes, twice cooked sticky pork belly. Crispy fried pork belly pieces that melts in the mouth in a sweet, sticky and spicy glaze that is to die for. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notify icon and post your comments please. We need about 500 grams of pork belly strips without the rind. The better the quality of the pork, the better the dish. Ideally, you want nice alternating layers of meat and fat, and then a nice top layer of fat. If there's too much of this, then you can cut off the excess. To make the pork belly so that it becomes soft and tender on the inside, whilst crispy and fried on the outside, we are going to slowly cook the pork in a flavorful stock. So in a large pan, add 1.5 litres of boiling water or just enough to cover the pork. Add a vegetable stock cube, a few slices of fresh ginger, three garlic cloves, two to three spring onions chopped up. Then stir well to ensure the stock cube is fully dissolved and everything is mixed together well. Now add the pork belly strips taking care not to splash yourself with the boiling water. Mix the pork belly strips and ensure every piece is fully submerged in the water. As you can see, the outside has already started to change colour in that hot liquid as it's already starting to cook. Reduce the heat to the lowest setting and then put the lid on and simmer for 45 to 50 minutes. Whilst the pork is cooking, let's make that sweet sticky glaze. In a small bowl, add one tablespoon of vegetable or sesame oil, three tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of honey. Oops, mine refused to get in there. A cool trick is to coat the spoon in oil and then squeeze the honey onto the spoon and it will slide right off. And two tablespoons of brown sugar. We also need some freshly minced ginger, which makes a monumental difference to the glaze. A cool trick here I recently learned is to use a spoon to peel the ginger, rather than trying to cut it off with a knife and losing lots of the ginger. Dang, tell me that's not a cool trick, right? Once peeled, slice the ginger as thinly as you can, then into matchsticks, and then across so that you have finely minced ginger. Then add this into the glaze. Okay, the final ingredient is fresh red chilies, thinly sliced. However, I have a four year old who can't take his spice, so I'm adding the smallest amount of dried chili flakes, which barely registers on the Scoville. Then mix together really well and set aside. Let's check our pork. And after 45 minutes, it's fully cooked and starting to really soften, but still retain its structure and texture, which is important for the next stage. Remove the pork, and then using lots of kitchen paper, make sure you dry the meat as well as you can. This is really important because any water left in the meat will spit and splatter when you fry the meat in the hot oil later, which is really dangerous. Next, we want to slice each pork belly strip into four pieces of around two to three centimeter bite-sized chunks. You can slice these into larger pieces for other recipes like bao buns or even a sticky pork belly burger if you're really feeling naughty. Grab a large frying pan and stand as many of the pork pieces upside down. This is pretty annoying to do as they like dominoes when one falls. But there is a method to the madness. By standing the pieces like this, 
you'll fry and crisp up that top layer of fat, which otherwise would never really touch the frying pan. Once you're happy, turn the heat onto a medium high. And as the pork fat starts to cook, you'll see the pork pieces move around and start dancing around in the pan, which looks quite freaky. To protect yourself and your hob from splattering oil, I highly recommend covering the pan with a splatter screen. After frying one to two minutes, let's stir and flip the pork pieces so that as many sides touch the pan and get fried to the crispy. Then put the splatter screen back on and fry for another one to two minutes covered. As the pork fat heats up, it will release a lot of oil. When you see it start to pool like this, grab some kitchen paper, bunch it up into a ball, and then using some tongs, mop and soak up as much of that fat as you can. As not only will this splatter everywhere, but it will also burn your pork. After five to six minutes, the pork will have turned a lovely golden brown and looks good enough to eat as it is. I'm not gonna lie, I have eaten this as they are at this stage before. Anyway, now let's add the star of the show, our glaze sauce. As the sauce starts to heat up, it will slowly thicken. All the while, keep moving the pork, as the key action here is to ensure that the sauce keeps coating each piece as it thickens, kind of like basting a rack of ribs, so that the meat turns darker and darker as that glaze thickens. Keep moving it, stirring and tossing everything together so that glaze doesn't catch and burn, else the dish will turn bitter and you'll have ruined all your hard work. The better that you can coat each piece of pork at this stage, the better the final taste. Okay, after two to three minutes cooking in that amazing sticky sauce, it's done. So set aside to cool slightly, as eating it right now is like biting molten lava and you can kiss the top of your mouth goodbye. Grab some spring onion, and you can cut this into two different ways for presentation and garnish. The first is to finely chop as usual. The second, which I prefer for this dish, is to thinly slice lengthways into slivers and then sprinkle that spring onion on top as a garnish. You can stab cocktail sticks into each piece of pork and make amazing party food, which will literally be snaffled before you even get a chance to walk around the room. However, I prefer to serve mine on a bed of soft Thai fragrant rice and a side of pak choy for an amazing meal. Where if you can refrain from eating that melt in the mouth fat, then you're a better person than I am. So there we have it, a phenomenal crispy fried pork belly and a luscious dark sticky and naughty sauce. I don't think there are many ways of cooking pork belly that top this, absolutely divine. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like it and post your comments please and I'll see you guys next week.